This could be the cooler of all coolers. If you guys remember earlier in the year, we put a 240 Atmos against two 360 millimeter Cooler Master AIO coolers and their job was to tame the 14900K. We pushed it through some benchmarks. And while one 360 millimeter AIO cooler was able to just tame it, the cores were still in the 90s. I've got the upgraded version. I have the 360 millimeter version of that. Plus, they have a brand new 360 millimeter AIO cooler that's meant to be even better than this one. We have new hardware. This is the Intel Core Ultra 9. I've also got the Z890 carbon Wi-Fi motherboard and an RTX 4090. So we're gonna set up a test bench, put these two coolers head to head and see if they can tame the Ultra 9. Hey guys, I just need to give a huge shout out to Scorptech. We were not provided with any CPUs for launch for review. And so they came in super clutch. So if you are interested in any of the new CPUs, I'll leave a link down below to Scorptech's website. This motherboard is dead on arrival. I am getting so sick of hardware these days coming out with all of these extra features and they can't get the basics right. There is so much being released that has just so much problems. Intel CPUs, they should have been delayed. They shouldn't be on the market. Why do I get so many dead on arrival motherboards? This never used to happen five, 10 years ago. All these companies charging people so much money and they can't even get the shit to work. Intel, you should have delayed your CPU launch. If you were sick of this watermark and not being able to utilize all of Windows features, then head on over to whokeys.com. Purchase a Windows 10 Pro key for $16 or a Windows 11 Pro key for $22. Use my code IFR25 for 25% off with loads of payment methods. Copy your code from the user center and paste it here to activate. They also provide you with a step-by-step -step guide and 24 hour support. Well, luckily for us, we actually had the Z890 Hero on hand as well. Sorry if I look sweaty or I've got grass all over me. I just finished mowing the lawn. Now we put the system together and we had some very interesting results results between the two 360 millimeter coolers, but also the CPU itself. Now you guys recall earlier in the video where I said Intel should have delayed their launch and I encountered why they should have delayed it. We were getting mixed results. The system was not stable at all. Now, one thing I will say is the cooler, which was actually expected to lose one out on the test. Now I say expected to lose because they have actually upgraded the fans and the pump design with the newer cooler. So it's actually meant to outperform the older one. We did our first run and there was a 2000 point difference in Cinebench between the two coolers. You can see that the Atmos was so much cooler. However, both were able to keep it down while under TDP. Now I have some theories about this. Number one, as I said, the platform is unstable. So that could have led to mixed results. Now, in my opinion, the Atmos felt like it had a much better retention onto the CPU than the Ion did. It actually felt like the screws were pushing it down and applying a little bit of force to actually spread that thermal paste out. And you can actually see that by the photos I took here. As you can see with the Atmos, there is a more even spread of the paste and all of the excess got pushed out to the sides. Now, if we go to the Ion, you can see that there is a spot that looks like it hasn't made really good contact with the cooler. There's an excess amount of paste there, which means means that there is a hole. That means either this cooler is faulty in a way and it was not milled correctly or the mounting pressure itself wasn't enough. Now I did actually swap the ion around 180 degrees to make sure that I didn't mount it incorrectly. I wanted to do a second run just to make sure. However, we still got the same results. The ion still ran much hotter than the Atmos. Now our original test with the Atmos 240 was actually with the 14900K. So I'm actually thinking I'm gonna set up a 14900K system and we're gonna run the benchmark one more time. Let's rule out any teething issues with the new platform and let's see once for all which cooler actually performs better. But also, I'm interested in the mounting pressure on the new system as well. Well guys, this is our 14900K system. All of the specs are the same apart from the motherboard and I had to swap out the RAM as well. 
So we got some G-School Trident Z in there. Uh, you can see the differences between the scores of the Core Ultra 9 and the 14900K. And the Ultra 9 is way more energy efficient and it is a lot cooler than the 14900K. So realistically, the 14900K is going to be the ultimate test with these two AIO coolers. Now running them side by side, you can see right away that the 14900K pushes these to their limits. Straight away, the ION. You can see that a lot of the cores have gone into the yellow temperatures. Also pay attention to the multiplier up the top. The ION has actually throttled down. We're seeing 5500 megahertz, 5400 megahertz. Whereas the ATMOS is staying at that 5700, 5600 megahertz and still maintaining better temperatures. You'll also see that the application is actually not too bad on the 14900K for both of them. I still do feel like the Atmos has better mounting pressure, but I don't think it's enough to justify the difference. Now, in theory, the ION was actually meant to be the better cooler. It has an upgraded dual chamber pump design compared to the Atmos, and it has better fans as well. The fans have better airflow, they have better static pressure, yet the Atmos is still coming out on top. Perhaps these CPUs prefer the old pump design. I'm not entirely sure. However, what I am sure about is I ran six separate tests on two different systems and the Atmos came out on top. Now that's not to say that the ION is not a good performing AIO cooler. This is actually Cooler Master's first LCD cooler as well. So if you want a screen on there, you could have that. But it's also interesting to see how much performance you are actually losing out on if you don't choose a decent cooler as well. We are here two months later with a refreshed bracket due to the results that we concluded from this test. Cooler Master was not happy with the ION losing out to the Atmos. The ION has an updated pump design, has updated fans, it should be winning. Now remember when I said earlier in this video that the ION just didn't feel like it was making as good contact as the Atmos. Well, we'll see if this new bracket that has been designed from our very video actually fixes the issues we've experienced. There we have it guys. All we need to do is make Cooler Master make a better bracket for better retention and then the rightful winner will win. And the ION actually won by a large margin, 1,127 points to be exact. Even the temperatures are looking so much better and the multiplier is not thermal throttling anymore. Now jokes aside, it is good to see that Cooler Master has taken our feedback and implemented this new design bracket. They reassure me that they do have a replacement bracket for the first batch delivery and all new deliveries after that will include the bracket. So if you did want to get yourself the Atmos 360, it is going for only 100 and 88 Australian dollars. Or if you wanted to get Cooler Master's king of coolers, this is their very first LCD cooler. You could get the Ion 360 for 359 Australian dollars. Links are down in the description. Thanks for watching.